Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church, brothers and sisters. I'm your brother Kasafo, and this is your brother Zakwa. Oh yes, you introduce yourself, my bad. <laughs> no problem. This lesson is a Christian's nutrition, understanding the abominable things, and I hire willing. This lesson is edifying for us all. And if you are new with us, welcome, glad to have you here. Hope you're enjoying this time with us here today. All right, jumping into the abominable things. Zakwa, can you read the things we are commanded to do in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 39 and 40, please? And if any beef a wish he may eat and die, he that touches the carcass thereof shall be unclean until the evening. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes. And be unclean until the even. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even. Can you also read in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 15, please? And every soul that eateth that which died of itself, or that which was torn with beasts, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. Then shall you be clean. All right. You have to wash your clothes and yourself before even to be clean when night comes if you eat any clean creature in either case. Can you read Leviticus 17 and 16, please? But if he wash them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. Any clean things that dies of itself or is torn by another creature? is unclean to eat, and we will bear iniquity if we don't bathe and wash. The law does permit to give things that die of itself unto strangers and aliens. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 21, please? You shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gate, that he may eat it. Or thou mayest sell it to an alien, but thou art the holy people unto a higher thou life. This law about giving an animal that died of itself to a stranger is understanding that it is lawful to give clean animals that died of themselves to an unbeliever. Continue reading, please. Thou shalt not fear a kid in his mother's milk. So we can't cook male goats in their mother's milk. It's specific about male goats only in the Hebrew word. Also, if a clean animal is torn by another beast, we must cast it to the dogs, not giving it to anyone. Can you read Exodus chapter 22, verse 31, please? And ye shall be holy men unto you. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. We also have to avoid eating any abominable thing. Can you read Deuteronomy 14 and 3, please? Thou shalt not eat any abominable thing. These abominable things can be identified in the law. Let's look at the unclean beasts in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 7 to 8, please. Nevertheless, these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cook, or of them that divide the cloven hoofs, as the camel and the hare and the coney. For they chew the cook, who divide not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. Now, the camel, the hare, and the coney, they can't be eaten, so we can't eat anything with their flesh or substance in it, like a broth even. But they can't make us unclean by touching their dead carcass. Their fur can be used for clothing as well, by example of John using camel fur 
and it didn't defile it. Can you read verse 8, please? And the swine, because it divideth the book, yet to have not the good is unclean unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. So we can't eat anything with their substance in it either. We can't eat camel, rabbit, hare, or swine, nor touch their carcass because it's against the law to do. If we touch their carcass and find out about it, we have to confess the sin. Can you read Leviticus chapter 4, verse 27 and 28, please? And if any one of the common people sins of ignorance, while he doeth somewhat against any of the commandments of a higher and further thing, which ought not to be done, and be guilty, or if his sin, which he has sinned, come to his knowledge, and he shall break his offering, a kid of the goats, a female without blemish, for his sin, which he has sinned. So, the camel, the rabbit, the hare, and the swine's carcass can't defile us, as we read before. Hence, Eleazar wasn't defiled when they forced his mouth open to eat swine's flesh, because he spit it out, not eaten it, which would have defiled his soul. Can you read 2 Maccabees chapter 6, verse 18 to 20, please? Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, the aged man, and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine flesh. But he too the rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth, and came of his own accord to the torment. As it behooved them to come, that are resolute to stand out against such things, as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. So it's for love of life that we don't taste unlawful meats. Now, pertain to some unclean ingredients. Be mindful of modern ingredients like lard, animal fat, animal glyceride, hydrolyzed animal protein, enzymes, emulsifiers, monosterates, mono and diglyceride, and gelatin, rennet, glycerin, keratin, collagen, and tallow. We would encourage you to contact the company to ensure the product does not come from a pork or unclean creature's source. Sometimes the ingredients can come from a plant base or an animal base that is not from pork, so one has to contact the company to get the details. One could be getting defiled unawares, so be diligent because we are guilty for touching unclean things that can defile us, whether we know it or not. Can you read Leviticus chapter 5, verse 2, please? For if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast or a carcass of an unclean cattle. Unclean cattle are clean cattle that died of itself or was torn with beasts. Continue, please. For the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. So if camel, rabbit, hare, or swine get into our food, we have to discard the portion of food their carcass touch or the liquids have defiled. But the rest of our food is still clean, except if the unclean thing drops into a liquid dish like a pasta sauce, soup, or broth because they would defile the whole dish. We can't eat broth of any abominable thing. Can you read Isaiah 65 verse 3 and 4 please? The people that provoked me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificed it in garden, and burnished incense upon the altar of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in their monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things in their vessels. So not only eating swine, but the flesh of abominable things is wrong. Also, even the broth of an abominable thing provokes the Lord to anger. So dishes with unclean broths or liquids and etc. are to be avoided lest we provoke the Lord to anger. At a restaurant, so long as the unclean meat or the liquids from it do not come in contact with our food at any time, it cannot defile us. So if one is concerned, asking for a clean grill, pan, or pot with clean utensils suffices to keep us from getting defiled by these things. In a store, 
If these unclean meats are near clean meats, they can't defile them. Yet, if their juices are touching the clean meat, we cannot eat it because we would be eating the unclean thing substance. Also, be sure the butcher is using a clean knife on clean meat so as not to get any unclean meat parts in your meat. Israelites of old would not eat unclean meats nor things sacrificed to idols. Can you read 4th Maccabees chapter 5 verse 1 to 3 please? The tyrant Antiochus therefore sit in a public state with his assessor upon a certain lofty place with his armed troops standing in a circle around him commanded his spear bearers to seize every one of the Hebrews and to compel them to taste swine's flesh, the thing offered to idols. And should any of them be unwilling to eat the accursed food, they were to be tortured on the wheel and so killed. Unclean meats and things offered to idols are considered accursed foods. Can you read first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20? And Acts 15, verse 29, please. Uh, first Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils, and not the Elohim. And I will not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Acts chapter 15, verse 29. That ye abstain from meat offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. For which, if you keep yourselves, you shall do well, fare you well. So we do well if we abstain from those things. Hence, birthday cake, Thanksgiving turkey, Easter Sunday meals, Halloween candy, Christmas meals, for example, are meats offered unto idols among the customs of the heathen that we ought to partake in. Now, we know an idol is nothing, but we do this for another's conscience. Let's continue learning of the rest of the abominable things, the unclean creatures of the sea. Can you read Leviticus chapter 10? I'm sorry, chapter 11, verse 10 to 12, please. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, it shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat their flesh, but you shall have their carcasses an abomination. Whatsoever hath not thin, nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. The unclean sea creatures are an abomination. It doesn't defile us to touch their carcass, yet we ought to view their carcass as abominable and have them in abomination. So lobster, shrimp, Calamari, oysters, octopus, catfish, caviar, and etc. are unclean unto us for eating. If the substance of such like things are in our food, we cannot eat it lest we be unclean. In a store, the things of the sea's carcasses can't defile us. So if there's catfish next to salmon, and the catfish liquids isn't marinating into the salmon, then the salmon is fine because we won't be eating catfish. Continuing to unclean birds. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 12 to 19, please? Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 12. But these are they of which you shall not eat, the eagle, and the ostrich, and the osprey, and the grebe, and the kite, and the vulture after his time, and every raven after his time, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cacao, and the hawk after this time, the little owl, and the great owl, and the swan. So let's look at the definition for swan. This is something important for us. It's H8580. The swan's definition is properly a hard breather. That is the name of two unclean creatures, a lizard and a bird, both perhaps from changing color through their irascibility. Probably the tree toad and the water hen. This is some specific. The water hen, when it speaks of swans, these are types of water hens. The swan, English definition, is swans are birds of the family of the Anatidae within the genus Cygnus. 
The swan's closest relatives include the geese and ducks. So this helps understand that duck is also a part of the water hen family or swan family in the scripture and it's not for us to eat. The water hen definition is an aquatic rail, especially a moor hen or related bird. A moorernis rails, a genus of birds in the rail family. We have some information. If you download the PDF to the lesson, you'll have this information as well with the links to understand that ducks are also unclean for us to eat. Continuing in Deuteronomy 14, verse 17 and 18, please. And the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the comorant, and the stork, and the heron after her kind, and the latwing, and the bat. These unclean birds are not to be eaten, yet their carcasses cannot defile us by touching them. If their substance is in our food, we cannot eat it because we would be eating an unclean thing, as we've discussed with the prior uh, creatures as well. Continuing in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 13, please. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten, they are an abomination. So all the fowls that we just went over, they are an abomination and they shall not be eaten. Now, going on to unclean flying insects. Can you read Leviticus chapter 11, verse 23, please? For all other flying creatures that which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Flying insects have four feet and two hands, which is why you see six limbs on them. You can reference the book of Proverbs to understand that the spider works with her hands. So those two front limbs are actually hands. Even as you see mosquitoes there doing whatever they're doing when they are standing still. Now, can you read Deuteronomy? <laughs> can you read Deuteronomy 14 and 19, please? If every creature thing that flyeth is unclean unto you, they shall not be eaten. So all flies, gnats, mosquitoes, bees, and flying insects of every kind, besides locusts, crickets, and grasshoppers, are abominations and unclean for us to eat, though their carcasses cannot make us unclean by touching them. For example, killing a mosquito doesn't make you unclean, or a dead mosquito falling on you doesn't make you unclean. But eating one that fell in your food will make you unclean. So hopefully that helps for clarity. And we did talk about the grasshoppers and crickets last week. I did get some. I did taste them. The crickets actually taste better than the uh, grasshoppers. I got this Mexican flavor for the grasshoppers. It was too, too much lime in it for me. But I got some spicy crickets and I've enjoyed it. I actually have one here so you all can see the evidence. You probably can't tell, but <laughs> this is some cricket here. <laughs> I'll eat some later, not while we're on the list. <laughs> Let's get into the unclean beasts that have hoofs. Can you read Leviticus chapter 11, verse 24 to 26, please? And for these, you shall be unclean. Whosoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the evening. And whosoever bear part of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. The carcasses of every beef which divides the hook and is not clothed and footed nor sure if it could are unclean unto you. Everyone that touches them shall be unclean. So horses and those of that family are unclean for eating, and we are not to touch the carcasses lest we be unclean until the even. Yet, you don't have to bathe or wash in that scenario. If we carry their carcass, we have to wash our clothes before evening is over though. Continuing in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 27, please. And whatsoever goes upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whosoever touches the carcass shall be unclean until the even. So these are canines and felines that fit into this category, along with badgers and those of that type. They are not to be eaten, and if you touch their carcass, you're unclean until even too. But 
No washing is required. Continue in verse 28, please. And he that bears the carcass of them shall wash his clothes, and be unclean unto the evil. They are unclean unto you. Now, if we carry their carcass, we wash our clothes before even is over to be clean. Now, going into the creeping things, can you read Leviticus 11, verse 29 to 32, please? Leave also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind, and the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whosoever do touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean unto the evil. These laws that we're about to go into pertain to these creeping things, the weasel, the mouse, the mole, the snail, every kind of tortoise, and the ferret, and the chameleon, lizard, snail, and mole. Not all unclean creatures altogether is these specific ones that were mentioned. All right, let's continue verse 32, please. Would the rat be in the mouse family? Let me fact check myself for a moment. The Hebrew word mouse is mouse. It doesn't say rats, so I would say rats count as other rodents and mice are mice. We'll just come back to it. Yeah. We'll look into it. Okay. Continuing, where are we at? Leviticus 11 and 32. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, who would fall, it shall be unclean. Whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack. Whatsoever vessel it be, when any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the evil. So shall it be cleansed. So these specific creeping things, the weasel, the mouse, the mole, the snail, every kind of tortoise, the ferret, lizard, and chameleon, can defile our cooking ware. So if any of their carcasses fall upon any vessel of work, like a plate, bowl, or pot, not made of earth, they must be washed and are unclean until evil. Yet the vessel itself cannot defile anything else, just the liquids from within it, if there is any when the carcass falls upon it. Can you continue verse 34, please? Of all meat which may be eaten, not on which such water cometh shall be unclean. And all is great that may be drunk, if every such vessel shall be unclean. If you have food, we just read verse 34 of Leviticus 11. If you have food or drink, and the liquid from the defiled vessel touch it, then your food or drink is unclean too. Can you read Leviticus 11 and 33, please? If every earthen vessel were into any of them followed, Whatsoever is in it shall be unclean, and you shall break it. This law is straightforward. The food or drink in the earthen vessel is unclean, and the vessel must be broken. If it's not an earthen vessel, and the carcass doesn't touch the food or drink in it, then the food or drink is still clean because their carcass didn't touch it. <laughs> Though the non-earthen vessel is unclean and must be washed. Right, and remember these are specifics about these creeping things. Continue in verse 35, please. Everything whereupon any part of the carcass falleth shall be unclean. Whether it be oven or ranges for pots, they shall be broken down. If they are unclean, it shall be unclean unto you. So, if any carcass of those creeping things, the weasel, the ferret, the mouse, the mole, the snail, the lizard, the chameleon, and any kind of tortoise fall upon your oven or stove ranges, then you must break it down and it must no longer be used. We have stoves and ovens all in one today. If a weasel, mouse, or one of the aforementioned creatures carcasses fall on your stove, it does not defile both the stove and the oven, but just the thing that it actually fell upon will be unclean and must be discarded or not used. 
you would need a new stove top though if the unclean thing fell on your stove and vice versa. Continuing in Leviticus 11 to 36, please. Nevertheless, a fountain of pit, where there is plenty of water, shall be clean. But that which toucheth the carcass shall be unclean. This is referring to ponds, lakes, rivers, and etc. So if swimming in a lake and the carcass touches you, you'll be unclean from touching it. And the same goes for your meat and drink that touches the carcass. Yet the body of water is still clean. Also, if someone has clean meat and any part of these certain creeping things, carcass, in the same pot of water, everything is unclean because that is not a fountain or pit with plenty of water. Just for clarity, in case someone says is a pot of is a pot of water and did it defile it. Alright? Can you read Leviticus 11, verse 37 and 38, please? And if any part of the carcass fall upon any sowing seed, which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and if any part of the carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you. This law is straightforward of how the carcasses of these certain creatures can defile a seed if there is water upon the seed. The laws just covered pertain to those creeping things aforementioned only, not all unclean things in general. All other unclean creatures, whether beasts, fowl, flying insects, sea life, or creeping things of the earth, like badgers, ants, spiders, centipedes, and snakes, don't defile kitchenware, ovens, stoves, and seeds like these unclean creeping things we just covered. Of course, if any of these other unclean things fall in our food, the portion of food that they touch can't be eaten, having the part of the dead carcass or substance upon it, which would defile us for tasting the abominable thing. But the whole dish is not defiled unless it is a liquid dish in which everything can be contaminated like a soup, sauce, or drink because the substance of the unclean thing is getting in the stuff. Of course, any food cooked with any part of any unclean creature is unclean to eat since we can't eat abominable broth either. Now, there are laws that pertain to the other creeping things that creep upon the earth as well that aren't a weasel, mouse, tortoise after its kind, ferret, lizard, mole, or chameleon. Can you read Leviticus chapter 11, verse 41 to 43, please? And every creep of thine that creep upon the earth shall be an abomination, it shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, reptiles like snakes, continue please. And whatsoever goeth upon all four, other rodents, other creatures that are part of like the weasel family, known as the Mustilidae family, and reptiles like gators and crocs and such. Continue please. But whatsoever hath more feet among all creeps of things that creep upon the earth. Ants, spiders, centipedes, roaches, and such critters. Continue, please. Them shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Continue. You shall not make yourself abominable with any creep of thing that creepeth, neither shall you make yourself unclean with them, that you should be defiled thereby. Eating these other creeping things would make us abominable. Yet touching their dead carcass cannot make us unclean, like the weasels, mice, tortoise, after its kind, ferrets, chameleons, lizards, snails, and moles would. So if we touch an ant, roach, snake, or spider, for example, we would not be made unclean. And if it's in our food, we would just have to remove it and the part that it got to, to ensure we don't eat any of it, but the rest of the food is clean. Of course, if it falls into a pot of liquids, the unclean thing is cooking into the water, making the broth abominable, so that's unclean. Can you read Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44, please? For well, I am Ahia Yahweh, ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of truth and thing that keep upon the earth. Amen. So an overview of the laws. Unclean beasts that divide the hoof, camel, rabbit, hare, swine. We are defiled by eating them, 
and you should not touch their carcass, though their carcass can't defile us. Unclean sea creatures. Dead carcasses can't defile us, though they are detestable to us. Only when eaten can they defile us. Unclean fowls. Eagle, swan, duck, pelican, bat, flying insects like bees, wasps, and etc. Their carcasses can't defile us, but eating them will make up our souls unclean. Unclean beasts that divide the hoof and are not cloven footed nor chew the cud. This is the horse family. They can't be eaten and they make us unclean till the even if we touch their dead carcass. Yet we don't have to wash anything. But if we bear their carcass, we must wash our clothes and be unclean until the even. The unclean beasts that have paws going upon all four. Canines, felines can't be eaten and they make us unclean until even if we touch their dead carcass. Yet we don't have to wash anything. But if we bear their carcass, we must wash our clothes and be unclean until evening. Unclean creeping things. The weasel, mouse, tortoise, family, the ferret, chameleon, lizard, snail, and mole can't be eaten. If we touch their carcass, we are unclean until evening. And whatever vessel and kitchenware, food or drink they fall on when dead are unclean. Now the other unclean creeping things. Other unclean creeping things can't be eaten as well, but their carcasses can't defile us or our stuff like the aforementioned creeping things. Now the unclean creeping things that creep, creeping insects. All creeping things that creep upon the earth like spiders, ants, centipedes, snakes are abominations and shall not be eaten. Their carcass cannot make us unclean though they are abominable to us. And the clean beast that died of itself or was torn, touching their carcasses cannot make us unclean. But if we eat of it, it defiles us. We have to bathe and wash our clothes or else we bear iniquity for it. So that is an understanding of the abominable things and what should not be eaten as a Christian. Uh, Zachary, you got anything? No, 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 no. Right. One moment, we'll check YouTube, we'll pray out, make sure everything's good. Alright. Shout to Chalo family. Everybody like to shout to Chalo for here. Alright. Chalo, maybe one. You want to go ahead and pray, bro? All right, so I'll pray. My Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, and that will be done on earth, and the earth in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine are the kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven. Heavenly Father, I ask for their high week. Pray unto you this day, asking that you may look down upon us, that you may have mercy, and that that compassion may be stirred up against us, that thou may have mercy and, and, and accept our repentance, and allow us to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, to show that we are truly sincere from the heart, and that we are endeavoring to do that which is well in thy sight. I pray for our brothers and sisters. I pray that you may deliver us, that you may have mercy upon us. In the holy name of the exalted, in the name of Yahshua, we pray and say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, brothers and sisters, I have be with you all. Thank you, Lord. So, uh, all right, everybody. We'll see you on the next lesson. Ciao. HRC, 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 HRC,